What is up, beautiful people? Welcome or welcome back to Just For TV Presents. I'm just saying my audio diary. And in this new episode, I'm just saying who's pouring what into your gravy boat? No, y'all, seriously, are you really being self-aware? And this don't have nothing to do with self-care. It's an intimate indulge. Let's get into it. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Boom, boom. My no-strings-attached audio diary. That's what I'm calling it, because that's how I feel. Ah! <laughs> it's time to lift the words from the pages and just get it out, y'all. Get hip to this new wave audio diary. Once again, welcome or welcome back. I am your favorite cousin, and here on this particular scene, your hostess, doing the mostest, just with a mess, loud, proud, and bass booming with real talk in your ear. I hope all is well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in yet again, because you could have lent your ear anywhere else, cousin. But you lent it to me, and I am most grateful for that. Before we dive deep and indulge, let me drop a pin so that you guys can head over to, I'm just saying, that's I-M-J-E-S-S underscore S-A-Y-N over on IG and interact with the kid a little bit. Also, be sure to subscribe from whatever platform you're currently listening and tap in. Lastly, for the real live engagement, overall entertainment, and all things Jess, Make sure you subscribe to Just For TV over on YouTube so that you don't miss out on the video components of these audio episodes. All right now, cousin, go ahead and grab your mason jaw of whatever it is that you may be sipping D God knows I hope it's five o'clock wherever you are. Get yourself a pen, a cute notebook, and let's talk about this thing called self-awareness that you should be pouring into your own gravy boat. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. So, cousin, it is now the season of turkey and Uggs, scarfs and shitterlings, where Uncle Clifford said rule number something another. Stop trying to be everybody's cup of tea, then you won't have any to sip on yourself. But, but, I think L. Varner said it best on not one, but two separate occasions. Poor me. And can I get a refill? I think we can all say wholeheartedly that we love certain attributes about ourselves, right? Whether it be we're a great friend, we're open-minded, we love hard, we're patient, we're great listeners, we're great parents, and so on and so forth, right? And while the views that we have of ourselves are extremely important, it does differ from the process of actually actively loving ourselves. Same as there being a difference between physical self-care, right? Which are things like exercising, shopping, spa days, or skincare routines, and actual inward self-awareness and love. Sometimes in life, you know, we find ourselves in situations where the glass, whether it's seen as half full or half empty, That half of a pour of whatever is in there is just half of nothing that is self-love or inclusive of self-awareness. So there was a time in my life, right, where I know I overextended myself. I jumped through leaps and bounds for a person who would never give me the satisfaction of ever filling my gravy boat. I would literally, y'all, take 10 steps forward to have to immediately take 32.587 steps backwards. Like, make it make sense. But I digress, and hindsight is clearly 2020 because I will never make the mistake of filling somebody's gravy boat who isn't overflowing mine with that white sausage gravy ever again. And you best have my biscuit. With that being said, it's just really easy to think that we are loving ourselves when truly we are not. It's the total opposite. As humans in general, we really need to start to see ourselves as worthy to actually be poured into, right? And in order to do that, we first need to find ourselves. We need to figure out our passion. We need to find out what truly makes us happy, what sets us off, what makes us tick. What's the deal breaker? What, cousin? What? Like, this is self-awareness. The act of actually sitting with yourself, meditating, breathing, reflecting, learning, embracing everything that is you. 
right? Let somebody else take the reins and worry about all that other shit that you have going on for a moment and spend some quality time with yourself. Let's spend time learning our love language, then loving ourselves in that language so that we can show and guide others on how we need to be loved. How'd that sound? We need to figure out what we best respond to, what aspects of our soul need to be refueled, healed, tuned up, bottled or breastfed, intended to. That same energy that you pour into whatever else, whomever else, whatever else is going on, right? Flip it and start pouring it into yourself instead. We all practice some sort of awareness all day, every day, right? With everything else that we have going on. But For some reason, when it comes to self, it's just not comprehended the same. I don't know why, and I find it so strange that we can't pour into ourselves the same way that we pour into everything else that we have going on in our lives. Like, no, keep that same energy with self. I think the main things that we need to do is just trust ourselves, be loyal to ourselves, be committed to self be committed to self. That value that is placed on what we can produce for others needs to be internalized and placed upon ourselves instead. Let's prove a point to ourselves. Like self-awareness is simple. It's just maintaining a loving attention, a steady caring, a constant loving of oneself to yourself. I think a good practice to become self-aware is to find your tribe. But y'all, Please vet your friends. Please vet your friends. By surrounding ourselves with people that genuinely love us, that provide positive support, that feed our souls, will inadvertently enable us to become self-aware. Like, I don't know if y'all know this or I don't know if y'all realize this, but inward change, accountability, and acceptance, it's all directed and affected by the company that we keep. That old dodge, birds of a feather, Flock together. Yeah, they do that for a reason. I got another colloquial for you. (laughs) If you ain't heard it in a long time, here it is. All company ain't good company. Same church, different pew. Shall I go on? (laughs) Let's stop clinging to or accepting negative influence. If your gut told you they hating, they hating. If your gut told you something ain't right, some ain't right. Like, best believe it. Y'all better stop playing and listen to your intuition. Y'all better stop playing with your intuition now. Like, we need to begin to free ourselves from these toxic and unhealthy friendships, relationships, family ships. Hell, just jump ship because they are that opposite, right? They are the things that are keeping us from openly and willingly loving ourselves and just being self aware. Repeat after me, cousin. I am creating the life that I deserve. I am surrounding myself with people who believe in me and who want the best for me. That's the affirmation. That's the mantra. That's us becoming self-aware right here, right now. By filling the gravy boats of others, we in turn deplete ourselves. We become burnt out, yet we still live by the fact that this is what it takes to be successful. When in reality, all we really need to be doing is learning to love ourselves, filling our own gravy boats. And by doing so, we then inadvertently put ourselves in a position to win. We've already won. We're winning. We're successful. It's called finding peace, cousin. And then once you find it, embrace it, bask in it. But most of all, protect it at all cost. It all just boils down to taking care of ourselves because at the end of the day, no one else can do that for us but us. You can't pour from an empty gravy boat, cousin. Like, you just can't. That turkey is going to forever be dry and your mama or whoever cooked will not be able to throw everything from Thanksgiving in that crock pot and make that turkey stew that we all love because that canned cranberry loaf just don't wet it like it's supposed to. It ain't that gravy, y'all. You can't fill your gravy boat like that. Happy Thanksgiving, cousin. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for allowing me to grace your eardrums with my vocal presence. And I hope to do it again very soon. I'm just saying, we gobbling up a lot of real life shit around here, cousin. 